All right, let's now take supply and demand and bring them together to understand a very important concept in economics. This concept, if you can understand it, which is really simple, really basic, uh, is going to drive a lot of your learning in other subjects of economics. Uh, and that concept is called market equilibrium. And what we have here is we've already seen this market graph. We used it in, in an example in a, a couple lessons ago. And what we have here is some product. It doesn't matter what the product is. Uh, this is some product. And let's say uh, that uh, on the price axis, we have uh, 4 8 12 16 dollars So every line is going up by $4. And on the horizontal axis, each line is going up by 5 units. Quantity of 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, et cetera, et cetera, okay? And what we did the other day was we identified a situation. We said, hey, what if the price, what if the price was $28, okay? If the price was $28, uh, what would, in fact, I'm going to put this over here, what would the quantity supplied be and what would the quantity demanded be at a price of $28? And so, go over here, and what we had identified in that little exercise was that when the price is $28, that the quantity demanded, as we, so at a price of $28, we hit the demand curve first, the quantity demanded is, let's see here, is 25 units, and the quantity supplied is over here, is 60 units. So QS is 60. Okay, and we I don't really I just wanted to remind you that we had written it over on the side, uh, but instead now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write it directly on the graph. So when the price is 28, the quantity demanded is 25, and the quantity supplied is 60. And here's the question that I want to ask is. How much is actually going to be exchanged when the price is 28? So the idea is that the sellers are willing to make 60 and the buyers are willing to buy 25. So if sellers show up with 60 units of something and they say, hey, we have 60 units to sell, and the buyers show up and they say, well, we only want 25 of them, then the sellers are not going to sell all 60 units. They're going to have some left over. What's really going to happen in that situation is for a price of $28, they're only going to sell 25 of the 60 because the buyers are only willing and able to buy 25 of them. Now, it doesn't matter why they're, they're willing and able to only buy 25. The fact of the matter is they're willing and able to buy only 25 of them. And therefore, the sellers will, will only sell 25 units, and they're going to have a whole bunch of stuff left over, okay, that they're not going to sell. Okay, let's consider, we also considered another situation. What if the price was 12 instead? And what we're going to say is we're going to call this price P prime, okay? And the little prime, the little apostrophe we put on there means uh, a second price. So the first price we worked in with was 28. P prime is 12. The second price we're going to work with here is $12. Well, at a price of $12, we can see that quantity supplied is going to be 20 units. And quantity demanded, all the way over here, quantity demanded is going to be 55 units. So now in this situation, the price is a lot lower. The buyers are willing to buy another dash in there. The buyers are willing to buy 55 units. So they show up ready to buy. We got our $12. We're ready to buy. We want 55 units. Give us our stuff. But the sellers say, well, at a price of $12, we're only willing and able to produce 20 units. So that's all we have to sell. So the 55 people uh, are going to buy, or they want to buy 55 but the seller's only going to sell 20 units. Therefore, how much is actually going to be exchanged? Well, in that transaction or in that, that market, only 20 units are going to be exchanged. Even though the buyers want 55, the sellers can only sell 20. Therefore, only 20 will sell. And here's the bottom line. What I'm trying to get at is this. 
Up here, only 25 units were exchanged because the buyers only wanted 25 units. Down here, only 20 units are sold because the sellers only have 20 units to sell. We have a, we have a, a situation where there's not enough stuff for, that all the people want to buy. And so here's the net result. The net result is that basically in any market situation, the amount of units that are going to be actually sold are always going to be whichever one is smaller, quantity supplied or quantity demanded. At a higher price, quantity demanded was smaller. That's what was sold and bought. At the lower price, quantity supplied was lower. So the lower amount, 20 units, that will, that's what was sold and bought. And so here's the statement I want to make based off of this. You're going to write this down. Whichever quantity is smaller between quantity supplied and quantity demanded, that's how much will be, will be sold and bought. whichever one is smaller. And so, in both of these situations, suppliers and demanders do not agree on quantity. At a given price, they do not agree. In this case, suppliers want to produce and sell more than demanders want to buy. At this lower price, suppliers are going to produce less than the demanders want to buy. So now the question is, is there a price? Is there some price on here, looking at this graph, where the suppliers and the demanders want to sell and buy the exact same quantity? And so what I would do if I were you is look at, pause the video and look at this graph and see if you can figure out, is there a price? At, at, a, at a price of 28, quantity demanded is lower than quantity supplied, but as a pr at a price of 12, quantity supplied is smaller than quantity demanded. So they must have crossed over somewhere, right? And that point is right here at a price of 20. It's the place where the supply and the demand curve intersect. This is the sweet spot of a market. The price where the, the uh, coordinate where the demand curve and the supply curve intersect is the place where quantity supplied is equal to quantity demanded. And in this case, that quantity is 40. The price where that happens, which is right here, which is in this case a price of 20, we're going to call that P double prime. We call that price equilibrium price. So really, instead of calling it P double prime, I'm actually going to call it P sub E. P sub E, which we call equilibrium price. Equilibrium price. And the quantity that results from the market at equilibrium price, we call that Q sub E, which is called equilibrium quantity. Now, equilibrium in science is the idea that everything is settling down to one to, to, to basically into one position. It's where everything is calm. In, in many situations, you'll have forward force and backward force, and when they both resolve one another, eventually when everything calms down and no one else is pushing, everything settles at equilibrium. It's like taking a ball uh, and uh, rolling it on a floor that's sort of uneven, and the ball eventually finds its place to the lower, lowest part of the floor, and it might roll there, then roll up one side, then roll back, then keep rolling until it eventually stops, and then it finds equilibrium, okay? That's what's happening here, and we're going to explain that a little more in just a little bit. Um, and so, here's what, here's what I want you to write down is this, is market, we call this market equilibrium. Market 
equilibrium is where the supply and demand curves intersect. Where they cross over each other. It is the price where quantity supplied is equal to quantity demanded. That price, that price is called P sub E or equilibrium price and that quantity is called Q sub E or equilibrium quantity. Okay. Now at this point neither buyers nor sellers neither buyers nor sellers want anything to change. Put the delta there. Want anything to change. What I mean by neither buyers nor sellers want anything to change, what I really mean by that, it's not that they wouldn't rather have more money or more stuff, but they're in a calm, stable place where they can now accept the price, accept the quantity, and they just move on. Now, if something else were to change in the market that might not have come directly from the buyers or sellers, then they would want everything to move back to equilibrium quantity and equilibrium price. So even when things change on this graph, so even if we have a shift of the curve, ultimately everything will eventually, or everything is trying to settle back at equilibrium price. Okay. Now, uh, the last thing I want to tell you is I want to explain what is uh, what this uh, it, what it's called when the price is too high. When the price is higher than the equilibrium price, we have a situation where quantity supplied is larger than quantity demanded, and that is called we call that a surplus in the market. The result. The result of price being too high, so price is too high, or no, let's say price is higher, that when price is greater than equilibrium price, quantity supplied will be greater than quantity demanded, and the result in the market will be a surplus of goods. On the other hand, when the price is below equilibrium price, quantity demanded is larger, or quantity supplied is less than quantity demanded, and we have what is called a shortage in the market. So we would have a shortage in the market when the price is lower than equilibrium price, and that results in a quantity supplied that is less than the quantity demanded. And so in this case of a surplus, the sellers, they want to get rid of their excess supply. And in the, in the case of a shortage, uh, the demanders want to try and do something to get the suppliers to make more stuff. And we're going to talk about that in the next segment of this lesson.